Hey there, treasure hunter. Would you trust a plant to show you where emeralds and rubies are hidden beneath your feet? Sounds far-fetched, right? But what if I told you that some plants only grow in soil rich in precious minerals, like natural sensors designed by the Earth itself? While most explorers get lost chasing old maps and scattered legends, there's a small group of seekers who've learned to read nature's silent clues. One rare plant, still unknown to many, grows specifically in areas where the ground is packed with beryllium and aluminum, key minerals in the formation of emeralds. And here's the wild part. This plant might already be growing near your home, by Kauthi, the side of a country road, in an empty lot, or even in that forgotten corner of your land. Most people walk right past it, but those who know what to look for, they never come back empty-handed. And the craziest thing? Almost no one talks about it. In this video, you'll discover how this plant became a miner's secret weapon, where to find it, and how to spot it without a doubt. But watch carefully, because the real secret lies in the small details. Go ahead and hit that like button, and make sure to subscribe, because what you're about to learn might just give you an edge that others keep locked away like treasure. While drillers dig deep searching for answers, there are plants that whisper secrets right on the surface. Quiet, subtle, yet incredibly accurate. They don't make a sound. They don't shine. They don't move. They just grow exactly where the ground hides what many spend their entire lives trying to find. Back in ancient times, alchemists and treasure seekers trusted less in maps and more in the subtle dance of nature. Before digging, they observed not out of superstition, but out of wisdom. In remote regions of Colorado, Zimbabwe, and the Australian outback, there are records of expeditions that only struck rubies and other rare gems after spotting a strange plant growing where nothing else would. That plant revealed the secret. An unusual leaf, an unexpected stem, a green unlike anything around it. It may seem like nothing, but for those with a trained eye, it's everything. And if you think this sounds far-fetched, just wait until you hear what science has to say about it. But first, would you even recognize this signal if it were growing right next to you? Its name is Indigofera, and just hearing that you'd never guess this modest little plant is one of the most underrated keys in modern geology. It doesn't stand out, no strong scent, no vibrant color. But there's something about it that's puzzled scientists and explorers for decades. Its strange preference for soils rich in beryllium, one of the essential elements in the formation of emeralds. And beryllium? You don't find it just anywhere. It's rare, valuable, and highly strategic. Yet Indigofera seems to have a natural affinity for it. It grows where most plants won't survive, often in dry, isolated areas or in soils that have undergone deep chemical shifts. When you spot this plant growing in abundance, it's a sign that something important might be hidden beneath the surface. It's like a biological compass pointing to buried treasure without ever saying a word. The real question is, would you Recognize it if it were just a few feet away from you. For years, the academic world brushed off the idea of a connection between botany and geology. But as mapping technology advanced, undeniable patterns started to emerge. Today, major mining companies use vegetation maps as a first step in the hunt for new deposits, not based on gut feeling, but on hard data. In Northern Australia, for example, researchers found such consistent indigofera growth over beryllium-rich ground that they now consider it a reliable technical indicator. The science behind this is called botanical geoindication, and it's revolutionizing how we study the Earth's surface. More importantly, it's giving everyday people, with a little knowledge and a sharp eye, the ability to spot valuable 
clues without needing expensive tools. Pretty wild, right? And believe it or not, this isn't even the most impressive part. So go ahead and smash that like button because in the next section I'll show you exactly how to recognize this plant with your own eyes and drop a comment saying I watch nature's signs if you're ready to unlock the earth's hidden codes now here's something even more fascinating indigo ferra isn't the only plant that behaves like this but it's one of the most reliable when it comes to emeralds its growth is directly tied to the soil's pH the presence of certain heavy metals, and the balance between moisture and drainage. In other words, it thrives where most plants struggle. And that's not coincidence, that's adaptation. Indigofera seems to feed on the very same conditions that, by chance, or maybe by some natural design, also lead to the birth of precious gemstones. And here's a detail most people completely miss. Where there's indigo ferra, there's often a whole chain of other bioindicator plants forming what you might call a coded ecosystem. If you learn how to interpret that ecosystem, you gain the ability to read the underground landscape without drilling a single inch into the ground. But now comes the big question. How do you spot these traits with the naked eye? How do you tell the difference between a regular plant and a true geological signal? If this has you even more curious, and it should, take a deep breath, because now we're going to put this knowledge into action. Now that you know indigo ferra is more than just a plant, it's practically the Earth's secret password, the next step is learning how to recognize it with precision. Knowing the secret doesn't help if you walk right past it without noticing. Indigo Ferra has tiny symmetrical leaves arranged in delicate pairs, almost like little feathers. Its flowers, while subtle, can appear purple, pink, or even bluish, and its stem is thin and somewhat woody. It stands out, even when no one's paying attention, thriving in places that look too dry, too poor, or just plain forgotten. Here's a golden tip. Don't waste time searching in dense forests. This plant loves full sun. Look for flat or gently sloped areas with minimal shade, like trail edges, hillsides, and abandoned lots. Use apps like Seek by iNaturalist or PlantSnap to sharpen your eye. And remember this. Those who learn to spot nature's subtle signs gain a quiet kind of power. But be warned, this is just the beginning. If you found this detail fascinating, wait until you see what comes next. Knowing how to identify the plant is great, but knowing where to look? That's what separates the curious from the true discoverers. And for that, you'll need to start connecting the dots. Access geological maps from reliable sources, like the USGS website, which is a hidden treasure in itself. Look for regions with pegmatites, metamorphic rocks, and minerals like feldspar and quartz. They often occur alongside beryllium. Then, layer and climate data. Indigofera prefers dry or semi-arid environments with acidic, well-drained soils. Still, sounds too technical. Don't worry. Think of it like a real-life treasure hunt where each clue depends on your ability to observe better. Try visiting abandoned mines, inactive exploration zones, or even little-known protected areas. And always, bring a notebook. Sketch, write, take photos, map your findings. Nature hands you the key, but you have to build the door. If you're loving this strategic approach, go ahead and comment. I follow nature's signs and hit that like button because what you're about to learn next no one else is really talking about now here's something very few people reveal the plants group behavior is just as revealing if not more than spotting one by itself a single indigo ferra might be a fluke 
But when you start seeing patches, lines, or geometric growth patterns, especially along slopes or contour lines, that's when you know you've found something big. These clusters trace the outline of underground deposits, as if the plant were drawing the map with its own roots, and that changes everything. Suddenly you can see the invisible, the vegetation becomes your legend. The terrain turns into a page from an ancient book, one that only a few know how to read. So here's my advice. Build your own atlas. Create. A personal field journal with coordinates, visual notes, maps, and overlays with geological data. You're not just walking through the brush anymore. You're translating the whispers of the earth. And if you think this is already next level, the next step goes even deeper. There are other plants, fungi, and even lichens that do the same thing. And almost no one's paying attention to them. If you thought Indigofera was impressive, get this. It's just one of many green messengers revealing what lies hidden beneath our feet. Take Homaniastrum catangense, for example, a plant found in Central Africa that only grows in soils, rich in copper. In Australia, Aramophila signals nickel-rich areas. And right here in the U.S., Astragalus bisulcatus grows in selenium-heavy soils, which is no coincidence. Wherever this plant appears, there are historic records of mineral exploration, even lichens, those crusty little organisms clinging to rocks, react chemically to heavy metals like lead, zinc, and even gold. This scientific field is called phytoindication, and it's being used by organizations like NASA and mining companies in Canada to map geologically promising terrain without drilling a single hole. Sounds like science fiction? It's actually just applied biology. And the craziest part? It's all happening right now in silence all around you. The vegetation is telling stories. Most people just aren't listening, or almost no one is. But it's not just about metals and gems. In some soils, Symbiotic fungi build underground networks that actually sense mineral changes and respond by creating visible surface patterns. Field full of certain mushrooms might actually be a living signature, a signal that something rare lies beneath the soil. And then there are the bioaccumulator lichens, which absorb metals like sponges and change in color, texture, or thickness, depending on what's beneath them. In parts of Greenland, scientists are now using these organisms to detect hidden gold beneath melting ice. So what does this all mean? It means that learning to observe your landscape isn't about pretty flowers or exotic trees. It's about realizing that the earth is always speaking to you just in symbols. The plant doesn't want to show you anything. It simply grows where the earth sings. And it's up to you, and only you, to learn how to listen. If you've made it this far, comment below, I'm ready to receive. Because the next part, it's going to change the way you see life itself. How many times have you walked past a plant by the side of the road without giving it a second glance? Maybe you were in a rush. Maybe you were distracted. Maybe you just assumed there was nothing there. But what if, in that very moment, your feet were standing over soil that hides emeralds and you never even knew it? That's the kind of thought that changes everything. Because the greatest treasures in life are almost always hidden in the ordinary. They don't come wrapped in gold. They don't show up with flashing signs. They live in the in-between spaces, in the simple things. Like a leaf that doesn't belong, a strange stem, or a plant growing where nothing else dares to grow. The problem is, we've been trained to seek the extraordinary in loud places. And we've forgotten that the invisible often lives in silence. Just like Indigo Farah quietly reveals the treasure buried beneath the earth, there are subtle signs all around us, pointing the way forward. 
in our personal lives, in our relationships, in our choices. But to see them, we need more than eyes. We need presence. Maybe true wisdom lies in relearning how to observe, not like someone racing toward an answer, but like someone willing to pause and hear what no one else is saying. The eyes, old prospectors knew this. They studied the soil with respect, touching the ground as if reading a sacred book. Today, in the middle of all the noise, social media, news, constant demands, stopping to truly look at a single plant feels like an act of rebellion. But maybe it's the beginning of a new way of living, because if a plant can teach you how to find a precious stone, what else might nature be trying to show you? Maybe you're overlooking priceless signs every single day, clues about opportunities, warnings, truths. Maybe what you've been chasing so hard is already there, right beside you, silent, still. And if something inside you felt that just now, then you're already ready for the next step. If all of this sparked something inside you, that feeling that the earth is full of hidden codes just waiting to be unlocked, then congratulations, you've already taken the first step as an observer. Now it's time to go deeper. Drop a comment below saying, I observe the earth's signs to show you're ready to see what most people still overlook. And if you truly want to learn how to identify these clues, I've put together a complete guide from beginner to advanced on precious stones. It's packed with everything you need to start decoding nature's language and discovering promising soil. The link is in the description. And don't forget, hit the like button right now because it helps spread this rare knowledge and tells YouTube to show this content to more people who are also ready to see beyond the obvious. Oh, and of course, Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications. This journey is just getting started. And if you felt something stir inside you while watching this, then you're ready to take the next step. Because right now, there's a video popping up on your screen that will expand your vision even further. Stepped on this, you might. Be standing on a million dollar ruby deposit, spot this rare plant, Click it and keep the journey going. In that video, you'll uncover another rare bioindicator plant, still unknown to most, but quietly used by seasoned miners to locate rubies without drilling a single inch into the ground. Don't underestimate what's around you. The Earth holds memories, and it shares those memories with those who've learned how to listen. Sometimes it all starts with your foot landing in the right place, at the right time. See you soon, precious stone seeker.